On July 16, 1990, 4.26 p.m., an earthquake with a 7.8 magnitude reading on the Richter scale struck the island of Luzon, the strongest that the island had ever experienced within this century. It caused an estimated $369 million worth of damage, which is equivalent to 8 billion pesos at that time. Additionally, an estimated total of 6,000 casualties were reported, which only proves how devastating this earthquake truly was. The epicenter was located near the town of Rizal, Nueva Ecija, with the most affected areas being the cities of Cabanatuan, Tagupan, and Baguio. Despite it being quite far, Baguio City has been severely affected, along with its sibling municipality, La Trinidad, leaving multiple buildings and structures collapsed and countless people dead and trapped within the debris. And with that, let's hear some first-hand accounts from a few witnesses of the earthquake. Where were you the moment the earthquake struck and what were you doing? July uh, 16, 1990. At the time, I was at the Benguet State University Elementary School. Uh, it is my internship. I have uh, practice teaching. Cut. It's almost 3 o'clock uh, at that time. Cut. It's the dismiss or dismissal of kids. So we before I dismiss them, uh, biglanga nag shake. So everybody ran away. Uh, we went outside and at that time, uh, I saw the ground. It cracked and then closed at once. So the building and KM5, the old building, market building, nag collapsed. It swayed. And it collapsed, and many uh, buildings already. Adangay uh, Also, many people crying already. I saw people. Uh, they are already in the Nailugan uh, Iti truck go, going to the Benguet Hospital. Nga agdardaran. I can see heads, foot nga na, naputol. So at that time, it's very. Ding uh, kabut I thought I thought that was the end of the world. Did it affect you financially or in your livelihood? How? Yeah, it affected. I was a student at that time, so uh, naputol ti allowance ko. And then uh, at that time, that's why you have to make a way so that because the roads are cut, uh, one day way. So I had to, adang uh, initiative me as students. Nagtitinulong kami. We went, kumpurmin uh, ng kami sa pulon nga we have to tap no lang adati makan mi. It affected actually. How did this event affect you personally? Did you have any near death or traumatic experience? When I saw many people died, many to many death. As we rescued, we went to rescue, we distributed foods. There were so many people who were uh, dead and nobody can rescue them. Mm. How was the economic situation after the rescue? Do you think it was greatly affected? It was greatly affected. All the businesses were affected. There were no, there was no business uh, thriving at that time. Even vegetables, the garden, they cannot bring their produce. I think it took Maybe one and a half year or almost two years. What can you say about the event? It was scary. It was scary. We thought it's the end of the world. Anya ti maibagam ang kalije situation ti bagyo edi nagingined. Ay ko ah, yah, the situation na edi dapat ah tanab. Nabura amin dagi ada takkan ngabal balai dagi jai da hotel kan pa ini after to this sabat na angutan dagi jai kuanti hotel jai da hayap nak angutan dagi jai jai da hilltop na angut dagi jai esong awan on awan on aja. Po bagyo nga taga Trinidad ta na angot ngot madamati agresyo dagi jay ko min minero. Kas ano nga na apektaran di jay trabaho ng kinde pamilyam. Ah, awan tigo matang e jay manit nga pa 
nga sweater ta dagi jay da pag lakuan tat awan awan tan dagi jay puesto tan dadaan da so nga han nga nabayadan jay datuma nakautang kami iti sinulid nga inalalami sa amin to in napayag mano nga tawunin sa kami to inininot nga tinantunagan jay akin bagit sinulid Do you want to die during an earthquake? No, right? So, how can we prepare for calamities such as earthquakes and even volcanic eruptions? Simple, we practice disaster preparedness. First, let's talk about earthquakes. According to www.ready.gov earthquakes, the first thing to do is to know your risk. Ask yourself these questions. Do I live near an earthquake prone area? Perhaps a fault line? or places that can erode easily like mountains? And are there any hazards that can increase the danger of an earthquake? Make sure that you have properly assessed your area and respond accordingly. Next is to prepare for the threat. Your family must have an emergency plan, emergency kits, and supplies. Also, legal documents should be stored safely. To further explain, let's have an analogy. Compare a situation wherein two men get trapped under a building and get badly injured. There was no food, no water, and nothing to treat their wounds. However, one of the men had an emergency kit, while the other had none. And what if it took a week for the rescue team to arrive? The man without the kit most likely died since the human body can only survive for four days without water, and he also had open wounds and physical trauma, while the man with the kid had food and water to last and was able to treat his wounds. See how one kid can mean life or death? It should never be underestimated. Moving on, what can you do during an earthquake? I know it sounds overrated, but you have to stay calm because once you panic, you put yourself at a higher risk of danger. Instead, perform the duck cover and hold. We all should know this by now. Drop onto the floor, cover yourself with something sturdy or go under a table, and hold on to whatever is covering you. After surviving the earthquake, there are things you need to do after. Things like expecting an aftershock. Another is to exit a building if it has been damaged and to avoid entering them. If ever you are trapped, reduce noise any way you can, either a whistle or hitting surfaces. Just remember to stay calm, control your breathing, and save your voice. Now, enough about earthquakes. Let us move on to volcanoes. Their emergency procedures are generally the same, but instead of doing the DCH, evacuate as soon as possible and with the addition of protecting yourself from volcanic ash and debris at all times. Lastly is to seal all openings of your house or evacuation center to prevent ash from entering. But the most important thing to do during both an earthquake and eruption is to cooperate with your family, community, and government. It's not that easy to communicate to the residents and government during an actual earthquake. For that reason, we have a proposal to establish two-way radio systems in the municipality of La Trinidad. These radios enable communication at a fast rate with full efficiency and zero latency. Eight locations were chosen, namely Wangal, Mount Costa, Windy Hill, Mount Alagong, Mount Yangbu, Ambio, Xilan, and Bukkal. Because according to research, to establish a two-way radio system, commonly, there has to be eight or more radio base stations. Furthermore, we chose high places because according to the North Country Public Radio, the higher up the antenna, the better the signal. A height of 120 feet or even higher will provide even more advantages for long-distance communications. As for the radios, they will be based in the barangay halls of each barangay in La Trinidad. The base radio station would be in the Municipal Hall located at KM6 La Trinidad in front of McDonald's. Nobody would have expected that a regular Monday afternoon would become one of Baguio's most destructive and remembered days. To this day, people are remembering the earthquake and their loved ones who fell victim to it. Because of that incident, it taught people a valuable lesson of being prepared during not only earthquakes, but disasters in general. It shows us that even with the basic precautionary measures, we can be safe. It also reminded people of how short and sensitive life is. 
thus bringing people closer together and valuing the relationships that they have, which is all the more reason to be prepared. So, are you ready for another earthquake? Let's find out.